Welcome to another video of HR Analytics. This is our lecture two. In the lecture one, we discussed about the introduction of HR Analytics and the importance of HR Analytics and how we are going to go about this course. In the lecture two, we will be talking about the process of HR Analytics, which you can remember with these uh, abbreviation, SEMA, or you can call it CMAA. So this is a process of HR analytics from the beginning to the end. So let's just first talk about the steps involved in HR analytics process. So as we said, it is composed of these four steps. So CMAA, the first step is that you have to collect the data, which represents the C. So we'll talk about what kind of data should be collected and how you should be collecting the data for H analytics, but this is going to be our first step. In the second step, you need to see the measurement problems and the measurement issues of the data that you have already collected. So this is going to lead us to our uh, second step. And then we have to take some kind of decisions on how to analyze the data. And then obviously after the analysis, when we'll reach to some findings, we need to apply those findings into our HR decision making. So simply speaking, this is step one, this is step two, this is step three, and this is step four. So these are the four steps that we're going to talk about in this video. So let's just start with the first step, that is the data collection. Now, usually HR departments have a lot of data. They have uh, all the records of the employees. But the problem is if you are not collecting the HR related data consciously, deliberately for the HR analytics, uh, you might not reach to some good findings. So it is important that you keep in mind before uh, collecting the data that you are collecting this data for your HR analytics and you will be analyzing it and using it for your decision making. So one of the major issues that uh, HR departments uh, face is the high quality data. High quality data means that how to record this data, how to collect this data, and what kind of data is collected. And if it is a true data or it is just uh, some numbers. So collecting and tracking high quality data is of first vital importance. Then the data needs to be easily obtainable and capable of being integrated into reporting systems. So the data should be collected in such a way that it should be supported by some kind of software or it should be obtainable. So let's suppose you're collecting data uh, in, let's say, numbers. And if you have numbers, you can obviously analyze this statistically and then you can reach some findings you can also have some data in words but that then should be converted into some kind of quantities or something otherwise uh, it's going to be a qualitative data that might also be very helpful but when we talk about analytics usually we go for the uh, quantitative data which is in numbers then the data can come from uh, different sources like hr systems which are already in place you have some kind of HR ISS in which there's already data available. Then you can also look for learning and development systems that you've already uh, placed. Then you can also collect data using the cloud-based systems, mobile devices, and even uh, today's world, wearable technologies. So what you're going to do is you're going to make some Google Forms. You might some help from survey monkey and your HRIS. So this is how you'll be collecting data. Now, what kind of data should we be collecting for our HR analytics? So there's a variety of data that is available to HR and to organizations, but these are a few examples of the data that you can collect, which will be useful for your HR analytics. So employees profiles, about their demographics, about their qualification, and all of their profiles. And then about the performance of the employees. For example, who are your high performers? Who are your low performers? Which are the people who are doing good from last few 
two years, which are the people who are not doing very good from last few years, and which are the people who are doing very, very low in terms of performance. Then you can also collect data about the salary and promotions of your own employees and the salary and promotion policies of other companies, maybe your competitors or maybe the companies operating in the same context or in the same country or at least in the same industry. You can also take the trend analysis of the salary, for example, how it increased, what components did you add into salary and other things. Demographic data can be collected, onboarding, which is socialization data can also be collected. Data related to training. We'll talk about the data related to all these things. And then you can also collect data related to engagement of the employees, the retention of the employees. One of the important components is the turnover calculation and then absenteeism and why people are absent and why everything is happening. So you can collect a variety of data and then analyze it. The next decision is going to be the measurement decision. How we are going to measure the data. So at the measurement stage, the data begins a process of continuous measurement and comparison of the data with the previous data and with other forms of data, which are known as the HR matrices. These are going to be our uh, very important topics that we'll be discussing throughout our uh, lectures. And especially, we'll have a lot of matrices and their calculations at the uh, end of this course. And HR analytics usually compares collected data against the historical norms and organizational standards. For example, uh, if you say that 10% of turnover is okay, but beyond this uh, turnover, there's going to be a problem. So that's going to be your uh, organizational standards. The process can not rely on a single snapshot of data. Now, the problem is that you can't have a data of one day or two days or a week, and um, you expect that you're going to get very good findings. You need to have data related to at least uh, several instances from past, because usually you'll be doing the trend analysis. So you'll be needing data for weeks and months and maybe years, the more data that you're going to have will give you more accurate results and more accurate findings. The data also needs a comparison baseline. So here, one important thing is that organization must set some kind of comparison baseline. What is the highest value? What is the lowest value? What is the averages of the things? And then you'll be able to come up with uh, some of the uh, findings that you might be applying in future. For example, how does an organization know what is the acceptable absenteeism range? Some people say if our people uh, are absent for like uh, two days a month, it is fine for us. But for some organizations, it might be three days a month. For example, uh, you can see that we have some matrices like time to hire, for example, how much time. Uh, the company is taking to hire one employee or uh, a batch of employees, then how much cost incurring in order to recruit one person or hire one person? How much is the turnover in your organization? How much is the absenteeism in your organization? So you will be talking about these things, but these are a few examples. Now the analysis part. This is one of the most important slides when it comes to HR analytics. The reason is that you have to first decide what kind of analytics are we going to talk about. And then you will be applying the tests and then you will be applying the formulas. So starting from the first one, if you want to know what happened in the past, then whatever you'll be doing, you'll be applying the descriptive analytics because they have the capacity to describe what happened in the past. If you want to know why something is happening, then you'll be using the diagnostic analytics. You'll be doing the diagnosis of your HR data in order to know why something happened in the past. So what happened in the past and then why something happened in the past. 
then if you want to decide based on your past data that what is most likely to happen in future so if we have to talk about future we will be using the predictive analytics which is going to predict what might happen in future and based on that you can always uh, uh, have some strategies to reduce that loss increase uh, if there's something beneficial for you. So predictive analytics. And then the last one is the prescriptive analytics that recommends actions or decisions that you can take to affect those outcomes. Therefore, we have these four types of analytics and it is important to consider which type of analytics is going to give you what kind of results. So you need to understand these terms and remember them because when you will be applying the tests and calculations, you should have a very, very clear idea what kind of analytics are we going to apply. Then we have the last part, which is known as the application part. So you've collected the data, you've decided your measurements, uh, then you have uh, gone through your analysis and you've decided your analysis type. At the end, actually what you're going to do is that it is going to give you some findings and then based on those findings, you need to take some kind of decisions. So this application part will give you the decision-making power based on the analytics that you have performed. For example, if you have a problem of turnover that your employees are leaving the organization, so you're going to apply the findings that you've got from the HR analytics. Then first, you're going to understand why employees leave the organization. So once you have this idea about why, then let's say if you have uh, the findings that lack of training and support was identified as the contributing factor, you can improve the training initiatives. So you can give more trainings, you can support people who uh, want different trainings. The same way, if you have a problem of absenteeism, that people are absent from the organization, after the analysis, you will be understanding the reasons for employees' long-term absences, and that's going to enable you to see if there's any problem with the environment, if there's any problem with the supervisor, and if there's any problem with maybe timings or flexible timings. So accordingly, you're going to take some kind of decision, and that's going to then give you less absenteeism or less turnover of your employees. So this will complete our uh, second lecture. In the third lecture, we will be starting uh, with the human resource planning portion. First, we'll try and understand the human resource planning, and then obviously we'll be having some data on Excel, and we'll be applying some formulas, and we'll be looking at some data that how uh, we can perform the human resource planning function. Thank you very much for now.